I was homeless at 17 and now I earn 10K a month. My name is Shantani Beckford. I am now 30 years old. Yes. I remember traveling to the UK from Jamaica. When I got to the UK, my mom was already here and she was already working. She was working really, really hard to save, to get money so that I could come to the UK. I had a stepdad at the time and his family members were the one that kind of sponsored me, the uncle at the time. So um, I would like just chill with them because I was waiting to get into school. However, because I was an immigrant, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, they would treat me like I wasn't a person. <laughs> they treated me like I was just, I don't know, something could just flick to the side. I just felt very like small being around them and I felt kind of intimidated as well because my mom always told me, this is not your country, you know, you need to behave yourself. Let anybody do what they want to do, but you need to be silent. So <clears throat> I just kept my head down and just let people do what they want and just distance myself. And my mom was just only working. All she was doing is working, working. I have, from 10 years old, I've been going to her cleaning job with her three times after school. She had a second job in the nursing home, caring for others. So my time was school, work with my mom. And during that time as well, my father passed away. I remember I was sleeping. I was 14 years old, I was sleeping. My mom came in the bedroom and she was like, Shantania, your father's dead. They they called him out of his house and they just opened fire on him, do -do 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 -do, knocked off his finger and his, went through his eyes, blood ran, ran down the hill. I'm 14 years old, I'm half asleep at 3 a.m. in the morning. And this is what I get told. I felt very vulnerable to a lot of things and people, but I couldn't say anything. I just had to fight for myself throughout nine to 17, just fighting for myself and standing my own ground and having my own back. Because even though I had my mom, I still didn't feel like it was enough. I didn't feel like I, I felt safe or I didn't feel comfortable. So even when she went back home, I supported her, but I was actually happy because it, felt, um, it meant that I had freedom to take charge of my own life because my mom she's a very strict woman and she she um she sheltered me kept me in a bubble a little bit even though I was going to be homeless at some point for me it was I was more happy that I had my freedom in a way My mom moved back to Jamaica. We were staying with this lady that we'd helped out before when she moved to the UK. I would used to go there and help them like paint and do certain things just to, and she was pregnant as well with the kids. So when everything was set up, we actually moved in with her when my mom left my stepdad. And then my mom went back home. The lady said to my mom that she would take care of me and while my mom's home and everything would be all right. But by like my 18th birthday, she told me that I needed to leave because I'm not there all the time and her son could use the room. So I said, okay, no problem. Can you give me all my mom's furniture that she put in here and I'll find someone else to go. And I actually um, rented the house that me and my mom and my stepdad lived. So I went back to that place. And then I, it was a two bedroom flat in Warsaw. And then I got a job working at um, Perry Perry Original in Warsaw Town. I was, go I was doing college like five days a week and then I would, um, after college, I'd take our bus from Dudley back to Walsall and then I'd work up until 1am, then go home and then do the same thing over again. I was at least clocking about 45 hours a week plus full-time A-levels. I was studying psychology, IT, advanced IT and communication and culture. <laughs> I know I shouldn't say this, but I even did coursework and sold them and got people bees. What else am I meant to do? <laughs> I was get, making 400 pounds a month. That was just the rent. So once I paid that, I had no money. Sometimes there was no electricity. So I'd stay in college till like it closed, then get home and then I'd just quickly shower in the cold water and then go to sleep. The person that I was renting the flat from, my step uncle, he said that because you can't afford it anymore, you need, you need to find somewhere else. So come stay with me. So I stayed with him for a bit. 
and I got another job working at um, a Jamaican restaurant. My uncle at the time, the step uncle, he told me that he was getting evicted from his house. So he, uh, I need to leave. And he showed me like a letter, but I had a friend who lived next door. So I asked her to actually have a lookout to see if he actually moved. He never did. It was a lie. And then I said, grab two of my big suitcases to Birmingham on the 51 bus, go to a hostel and say, um, can I have somewhere to live? And um, someone said they're gonna contact me, but then they went on holiday and never did. So I called back, nothing. So I went there again, nothing. And then I got a call and I cried because they're like, we found a room for you. We found a room for you. But then at that point, I didn't have any residency in the UK. So um, I was a bit worried thinking, how am I gonna have an accommodation but I don't have any rights to even be here. But I was underage kinda, so somehow I was able to get into a hostel and I started to do makeup for all the girls in the um, in the hostel. Like I'd do their makeup and then I would go outside in the gardens and I'd take pictures and I'd edit them and stuff. I still have the actual book with the girls' faces on there. And that's how I was kinda like, I was doing makeup throughout this as a way to escape. Creating helps me to escape and it gave me extra money. So makeup has been a side hustle for a long time. Then I moved out because I got a council flat and that was like, oh my God, that was like the best. The first point of call for me was to save for my passport. It was to save for my documents to stay in this country. I did that within like um, about three, four months. And then slowly but surely I started to build my room, I'd, I'd paint it, I'd wallpaper, I learned how to wallpaper off YouTube, wallpapered it perfectly, painted my house look beautiful, my YouTube setup room looked stunning. And I just started to film. Went to Poundland, bought some, um, some makeup and did my first zombie tutorial. And I was so nervous. And then I did a second one on a hair video and I was just myself, I was comparing the wig to a carpet. That's how soft it was. Like I was so excited and that video just went <sighs> And I was like, oh my God, what's happening? I just joined. And then, yeah, sometimes I cried a bit because like I couldn't believe that like, this is my life. Like I'm just doing this online, like people are watching it. The person I never really got accepted. People like to be around me, but at the same time, they're all weirded out by me. Yeah, it was just very different to have all these people like like you and think you're funny and like your personality and stuff like that. And it made me feel like accepted and seen. And after a while of working at Wagamama's, everybody there supporting me. I would tell them about my first 10,000 subscribers and the 20, that, oh my God, I got my first payment. And after like, I think it was like a year, yeah, I quit. Um, someone treated me very badly in that restaurant. So I decided I'm not going back. The general manager was like, come back for your last shift. Shift? What shift? The shift I'm taking is the one in my bed. I'm gonna get a good two to three days, maybe a week's sleep. Cause you know what? I deserve it. From working in 50 hour shifts, plus banging out YouTube videos straight afterwards, editing, while supporting my own mother, sending money every single month to support her. All me at the age of what, 23, 24? Yeah, I needed some sleep. <laughs> I could sleep for a year if I needed to, but I became self-employed at 23, 24, and it hasn't stopped. I just kept moving out of different homes and just like slowly building myself up whilst living within my means. That's the one thing I learned about social media. I don't need to fake anything for attention. I just need to be myself.